Welcome back, YouTube. Sensei Domino here. Welcome to Spine Ticks After Party. Got some great stuff to share with you tonight. I have one TTM return, some eBay pickups, and I'll be showing another group of the 1984 Topps Baseball Starter Set. But let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with the TTM. So this TTM has been out for about 10 months. Comes from San Antonio, Texas. The initials are CO, and this is a legendary softball player. It's Kat Osterman. She signed it to Tony, Kat Osterman, hook him. And she is arguably the greatest softball pitcher in the history of the NCAA. And I sent her two cards, and it uh, looks like she kept one of them because it didn't come back. Uh, but she was nice enough to sign this one. And I'm not even sure what year this card is. Looks like 2008. 2008 uh, Donruss Sports Legends. Fantastic looking signature. A uh, big fan of hers. Uh, you know, being in Texas, you heard a, quite a bit about uh, her accomplishments, and you know, she kind of had a rivalry with the uh, the other uh, key softball pitcher at the time, uh, Jenny Finch. And so that's that's another autograph I'd love to get it. Uh, some point. I'm not sure if she does TTMs. I know she used to, but uh, don't have any cards to send to her right now. But very happy to get this one. So thank you so much, Miss Osterman. Really appreciate you taking the time and <laughs> absolutely love this one. Happy to add it to the collection. All right. So next, um, there's not really a whole lot to show about this, but really excited to get it. Um, if you're familiar with, um, Robert at Prestige Collectibles. Um, you might be familiar with a um, checklist and price guide um, that he sells on his channel uh, by Gary Engel, and uh, I've I've wanted to pick this up for the longest time because it's it's basically the um, Japanese vintage baseball card checklist. I mean, it is it, it, the most comprehensive version that's out there and so i finally decided to pick it up and it comes as a pdf and so this is it this is the newest one 2022 japanese vintage baseball cards checklist and price guide the third edition by gary engel and uh, it's got um, color pictures and it's got it's got prices and, um, you know, for, for somebody that's sort of just getting into the, the Japanese uh, vintage baseball cards, uh, I needed something like this because, you know, al although I've, I've gained quite a bit of knowledge over the last, you know, year and a half, two years that I've been collecting, um, there's still so much more that I need to learn. And uh, one of the ways that I used to learn about sets and players and cards was, you know, going through you know, Beckett's and, and price guides and stuff like that when I was younger. So I will definitely be digging into this and, uh, you know, learning about some, some additional players. They actually have a, a Hall of Fame list that's in there, so I'm sure there's some names on that list that I'm unfamiliar with. So I'll start familiarizing myself with their careers. And uh, there, there's actually a um, uh, a section in there where they, they kind of teach you how to read the uh, Japanese players' names. And so I'm kind of looking forward to digging into that and seeing if I can uh, learn <laughs> at the very least some, some, some elementary, um, you know, uh, Japanese so I can sort of read some of the stuff that's on the front of the cards that I'm picking up, but really, really excited to get this. Um, because yeah, this is, this is, um, basically as far as I know, the only place to get it is, is through prestige collectibles and Robert. Um, but yeah, happy to get that. All right, so next, I've got a nice little stack of singles that I picked up over the last uh, two weeks or so, week and a half. Got quite a few um, football pickups this this time around. Um, quite a few from this 1958 top set. We'll start with 
Hall of Very Good, Tobin wrote. Card's in pretty nice shape, a little off center. Minor corner wear, but I love the color. This is uh, up there with one of my favorite sets from the 50s. I, I love the 55 Bowman, but uh, this is right up there as well. I love the, uh, the double image on these cards. Next, we have Eddie LeBaron. He was actually the uh, first quarterback in Dallas Cowboys history. Another Hall of Very Good. He was actually card number one in this set. Again, a little off center, minor corner wear, but very nice looking card. Next, we do have a Hall of Famer, Ray Witeka. And I actually am not sure if I have this card or not already. I do have several Way, uh, Ray Witeka cards, but I didn't actually check in my collection to see if I had this one or not. So maybe I do, maybe I don't. But I'm still happy to pick up another, another copy of this. I did pick up a few that uh, had creasing, and it's kind of hard to tell sometimes when you're looking at an image on eBay or even Com C, um, you know whether whether the card has creases or not. And you know I, I, on Com C, you know sometimes they'll mention crease, but most of the times they don't. And on eBay, it's kind of fifty fifty. You know most. Uh, bulk sellers will say that the, the card pictured is the card you will receive and that's basically all you get um so yeah a couple of these i picked up have have some creasing in it uh, i i would say wrinkles because they don't go through to the other side but still we have andy robustelli and this one has a crease right here and a, i guess a wrinkle right here and then there's another one right here but it is a Fairly nice looking card otherwise. And he is a Hall of Famer. And another Hall of Very Good. We have Bill Forrester. And again, this one has a bit of a wrinkle right here see that it's kind of faint but it is right there still another really nice looking card this one actually has much less toning than some of the others it's it's a brighter border but unfortunately it does have that little wrinkle i love the little you know, comics on the back <laughs> All right, so that's all of the 1957. Next, we're moving on to 1959. And all three of these are fairly sharp. We have another Bill Forrester. I love the uh, sort of pinkish-purple background. cards that don't have you know the the coin rub on the back so yeah this is really nice bright white borders fairly sharp corners just minor touches which is fantastic for a 59 but it is a little off center next we have a hall of famer bob st Clair. Centering is a little bit of an issue on this one, but this one actually has fairly sharp corners. Colors look fantastic. Love the blue background. And again, the back hasn't been rubbed by a coin. And 
next. This one is <clears throat> pretty off center, especially on the back. But it is another Hall of Famer, Leo Nomolini. You can just barely see a little bit of the white border on this side. A really bright white or bright yellow um, background. And uh, I actually watched a video that uh, I, I found because uh, Orlando from a collector's dream uh, posted a. Uh, did did a repost on a, a, a video where they were kind of explaining um, how cards age in sunlight. And the guy took cards from, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, all the way up to today and left them outside for something like 11 days or something like that. And uh, I guess he had a chemist friend or something like that uh, who helped him with this and was able to kind of uh, determine how much each one of them you know, it had deteriorated, and uh, from what he was explaining, uh, yellow was uh, the the color that faded the most, especially on these older cards like this 59, and so to get a yellow card that's this bright is really uh, pretty fantastic. Really happy to have uh, seen that video. I do try to keep my cards out of out of light they stay in boxes and in closets and <laughs> uh, so you know to, to be able to pick up one of these I'm, I'm pretty confident I'll be able to keep the uh, the colors uh, where they are now but you can see a little bit of the uh, I guess the, the previous card on the sheets uh, name plate right there just a little touch of it um, this side is completely cut wrong so it is an off-center card, but still has a lot of good things going for it, so happy to get that one. All right, this is another uh, card that I picked up uh, that, that kind of looked good in the picture, but then when it arrived, it was a little rougher than I expected. But I don't believe it has any creases. It does have like a um, almost like a print invention. This is Hall of Famer Gino Marchetti. Uh, if you can see right here, it's like a straight line all the way down the card. Now, maybe that didn't happen at the factory, but it's it's there. And there's a little bit of a pull up right here on this edge. Uh, this corner's a little pushed in. But I mean, looking at it on the photo, I was looking and there's not a lot of white showing on these black borders that looks fantastic so i decided to pick it up but yeah this is a little rougher than i was expecting but still i guess it's not too bad again love these uh, cartoons on the back these little comics yeah i don't know if i said it but this is a 1962 tops All right, so I believe that's all the football. So next we'll move on to basketball. And these are all 1975-76. Bought these all from the same, same seller. We have Walt Clyde Frazier. This card is really sharp, just a little off center. Actually don't have too many. Walt Frazier cards, maybe three. Happy to pick up another one. He was an amazing defensive guard. And he had an amazing fashion sense, too. <laughs> he always had these fantastic outfits. All right, next. I actually picked up a... These were both listed with... Uh, Two duplicate cards, so was happy to win these. We have a pair of Bob Lanier's, another Hall of Famer. This one, these are both off center. This one's more like pushed this way. And I guess this one is as well, but this one there's a lot less of this right border. But they're both really sharp.
the other two card lot. There's a big E, Elvin Hayes. And again, these are a little off center, but super sharp. This is a, a player that I'd love to uh, complete his player run of uh, he went to the University of Houston, the same college my dad went to. So I would love to complete his player run. And outside of his rookie, they're, they're fa fairly cheap. So it's just a matter of finding cards that are in nice enough condition and just deciding to buy them. I've got so many little mini projects. <laughs> and uh, I do kind of have a philosophy that I don't, I try not to actually look for specific cards. I try to let the cards find me. I believe that's the best way to find deals on eBay. And so that's that's part of the reason why I haven't fully focused on completing any sort of player runs, but still these are definitely nice to add to the collection. I probably have four or five of his cards from the seventies now, but don't have the rookie. All right, so I believe that is all of the basketball, yeah. I got one baseball and then five five hockey items. So the one baseball. Um, last week I showed a uh, 1960 Wally Moon, and I mentioned that I had been trying to uh, win a card of his for a decent price for a while. And, uh, you know, his, his, he's a fairly popular player, and so... Uh, although he's not a Hall of Famer or anything, his cards go for a little bit more than I think they should. Um, but I, I, I was excited to pick up a, a 1955 Tops Wally Moon uh, for for a pretty nice price. And so here it is. Uh, again, it's a little off center. Uh, minor corner wear, not too bad. No creases. Yeah, you can barely see this white edge right here. But this is the man with the most legendary unibrow in the history of sports. And, uh, I was actually on Aaron Sports Cards and Things um, channel last night, and uh, he had Frank, uh, I think his channel is Frank's Sports Cards and Collectibles. And uh, Frank was mentioning that it was because of Wally Moon that we actually have what is known as the Moonshot, and that's pretty cool. If 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 that's if that's the case, because I did not know that. I obviously know the term, but uh, did not know that it was associated with Wally Moon. So that that's that's pretty cool. But yeah, thanks Frank for that that great information. Looks like this is probably his third year or so. Maybe his second. Yeah, I'd say third. I'm not sure when his rookie is. But still, I love this 55 set. All right, so next, we have some really cool hockey pickups. These are 1962 Sheriff hockey coins and these are all hall of famers we have bob pulford who is a fantastic ttmer and these are in really nice shape all the color all the color on the edges and there's the back just a gorgeous example and the, the seller actually grades these. He gave this one an EX plus. But, yeah, I don't see a whole lot of damage on this. Maybe, maybe a little scratch right there next to the bob. That's about it. Next, we have Dick Duff. This is another... Great TTM signer, Hall of Famer. And this one 
was actually created a near mint by the seller. Stanley Cup champion of 61-62. This guy, this one got near mint. But I wonder if I <laughs> sent one of these out as a TTM if the player could sign on that coin, but I probably won't do it. In the last one, and this is actually the first item of any kind that I have of this player, legendary goalie. Really happy to pick this one up. This one was actually graded a near mint by the seller, but I, I see more, more condition issues with this one than either of the other two. But it's still really nice, and this is Glenn Hall. See a little touch, a couple touches of paint right there that are missing, but the, the surface of the coin itself is pretty clean. Another touch right there, I guess. And on the back, it seems to be like a little smudge or something right there. And you can see a little scratching right there on the edge, which you didn't see on the other one. So, although this one was actually graded a near mint. I would say that this is probably closer to EX than the uh, the Pulford was. NHL All-Star 61-62 second team. But yeah, really happy to have a Glenn Hall item in the collection. All right, so next... This is not a Hall of Famer, but a fantastic player. And this is a rookie card. And this is my first card from this set. This is a 1963-64 Parkhurst J.C. Tremblay rookie. And it's in really nice shape. Pretty sharp corners, just minor touches. The centering is almost perfect. Little down top to bottom. Just a gorgeous example of this. I was really happy to win this. I love the imagery. The puck kind of flying at you. It's a great looking card. Happy to get that. In the last one, and probably the biggest pickup of the last couple weeks, this is a 19... 51, Burke Ross. This is a Hall of Fame rookie card. I was really excited to win this, and I got this for far less than I probably should have. This is Jack Stewart. And these, these Burke Ross would actually come in pairs of two cards. And there was, so there was another card on the other side of this um, I actually looked to see who it was but I can't remember who it was but most of the time you find these these were perforated so most of the time you find these separated so I don't have a problem picking this up separated they were kind of intended to be done like that but just some minor little touches ink touches or something from the printing process I've always liked these Burke Ross sets and um, did not have any in my collection. So really happy that the first one that I get is a, of a Hall of Famer. And yeah, this is in really nice shape. Just minor minor touches on the corners. Centering is, is pretty good. The back gets a little more off. And then you got the little dots. But gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous card. Outside of the uh, hockey cards that I have in those uh, Reemsma sets from 1936, the 36 Olympics, uh, this is, uh, I believe this is the oldest hockey card in my collection, so it definitely has that going for it. So that is all of the card pickups that I have this week, but I do have a lot of autographs that I picked up from the autograph den on eBay. And uh, I've mentioned on the previous couple videos that these were actually mailed out on 
March 3rd. And these didn't get to me until I want to say it was like March 23rd or something like that. Um, they actually, actually they got they They were moved, uh, mailed out February 29th. Sorry, March 3rd. They actually arrived at the distribution center, probably 45 minutes from my house. And then they disappeared. And so it basically sat at that distribution center. Uh, I actually had to do a, uh, a lost mail search, uh, but they were finally able to find my package. And fortunately it arrived and, uh, the, the, there was no damage done to any of the, the, the autographs or anything like that. And, uh, the, the seller was fantastic. I, I kept constant contact with them and, uh, kept them updated. And, uh, he ended up, I actually had messaged that, you know, the cards der- er- finally arrived safe and sound. Thank you so much. And I was going to leave it at that, but the guy gave me a full refund. So, um, very, very good seller. I have bought many things from the autograph den. I, I talk about them quite a bit. It's, it's one of my favorite autograph sellers on eBay. There's no doubt that the stuff that he's selling is, I mean, it looks like he's purchasing, you know, uh, large collections of TTMs and stuff like that. So, uh, if he's not a TTM or himself, but, um, yeah, the, the autographs all line up. I never have any questions about authenticity or anything. So, uh, if you're on eBay and you're an autograph collector, definitely check out the autograph. Then, uh, you'll find some great deals. In fact, um, I actually won 57 autographs last night off the autograph. Then, so those will be coming in in the next couple of weeks. So excited to show those, but anyway, let's get to these. These are four by sixes. So these are kind of all over the place. We've got Hollywood, we have musicians, we have uh, sports. Uh, I actually showed this image uh, a couple weeks ago when I showed uh, uh, another pickup of, uh, I guess it was like 25 autographs or something. But uh, this one was signed, kind of signed in blue, and the other one I think it was signed in black. This is Jay Underwood. He's mostly known. This movie right here is The Boy Who Could Fly, which I, I enjoyed that movie when I was younger. Uh, but he was also um, the, the boyfriend in Uncle, Uncle Buck. And uh, he did a series of movies. I, I think it was Disney Channel or something called Not Quite Human um, that I remember watching when I was younger. Not that they were very good, but I remember watching them. So we got Jay Underwood. Next. I have another Burton Gilliam autograph. Um, the previous one that I showed uh, had him uh, in an image from Blazing Saddles. This is kind of the, uh, um, what do you call it? The yeah, I don't even know what you call it. <laughs> the, the poster, I guess. I know there's another name for it, but I'll just call it poster. But yeah, it's signed Burton Gilliam. And again, these kind of blank backs you can kind of see the uh the ink running through but these all have i guess like catalog numbers or something on the back i don't know what any of those means but i'm pretty sure it has something to do with uh all the autographs that the guy has and he has to keep them sorted somehow this one's kind of cool this is david keith uh, this is from the movie firestarter i believe with young drew barrymore um, but also a fan of the Major League series. He was Jack Parkman in Major League Two. And so, you know, you had Major League One, and the, the kind of the nemesis of that one was Pete Bukovic, who was an actual Major League uh, baseball pitcher. And so uh, I have his autograph as well, so happy to get a David Keith autograph. But what's kind of cool about this one, and I didn't know about this because – the autograph den doesn't show the backs of these because there's not really much to show. But it looks like David Keith actually signed this twice. He must have thought this was an index card. And so he signed the back of it, David Keith. And then I guess he turned it around and realized it was a photo and signed the front. So this is a double sign, David Keith. Pretty cool. All right, next. Uh, I showed an autograph of this this guy the last time, uh, but this one's actually personalized. I don't know if you can see it, but this is uh, Richard Mole, uh, who recently passed away. 
And I just love the uh, the inscription on this. This is Bruce. But then it says, see you in court. Richard Mull Bull. So there's, see you in court. Richard Mull Bull. So I love the inscription on this. And what a great character in Night Court. It's a fantastic show. They, they kind of rebooted it. Uh, haven't really watched it, um, but I do know that they rebooted the show, so it's kind of getting a whole new audience now. But what a fantastic character on a great show! Really happy to get another autograph of Richard Mole with a really good inscription on it. So, <coughs> all right, next, kind of a fan of this actor. This is William Atherton seen here in Ghostbusters, uh, but he was also in uh, Real Genius, which is another really good movie, and uh, he was also in Biodome, so really nice character actor. This is the same image and autograph that I showed a couple weeks ago, but this is Bo Bridges. Decided to get another one of this. All right, next we're moving into musicians. And we have Dina Carter, who was a country music singer, and I want to say late 90s, early 2000s mostly know about her because she had a, a, a song that was a pretty big hit called Strawberry Wine, which is a pretty good song. Kind of a cool autograph. I guess that just says Dina or something. Next, got another Bill Conti autograph. The other one that I had was a little um, streaky, I guess. This one's a little, little more clear. But Bill Conti did the uh, the score for Rocky, uh, the score for The Karate Kid, and uh, a movie that uh, I'm a big fan of, Necessary Roughness, because it was filmed at my college. Fantastic, fantastic musician, composer, Bill Conti. It's kind of cool to see the stuff that he has on his piano. You got Rocky right here and his chessboard. It's pretty cool. Probably some like sheet music or something right here. All right, next. Happy to get another Eric Johnson autograph. Big fan of his music. Heard that he's going to be on the uh, the new uh, G3 tour with Joe Satriani and Steve Vai. So, looking forward to hearing about that. Although I probably won't attend, I don't go to too many concerts these days. But maybe they put it out on DVD or something. All right, next we have legendary gymnast. Shannon Miller, kind of an interesting autograph. It looks like just <laughs> little scribbles or something, but that's Shannon Miller. All right, next we have another great Olympian, uh, Billy Mills. Really cool image right here, Olympic 10K gold. sure which year he won the 10k I want to say it was maybe 68 but I'm probably wrong all right next this was a this is another kind of duplicate picture and autograph that I showed the last time this is another Ty Murray again he wrote never weaken 
Ty Murray, one of the greatest bull riders in history. Next we have a PBA Hall of Famer, Norm Duke. I had an autograph of his in the, the last order as well. And I think he was about to release the bowling ball in that image of this one. It looks like he's celebrating a strike. But he is an amazing TTM signer. And, and Norm Duke probably wrote one of the longest notes that I've ever received in TTMs. Um, he actually had to, like, put arrows and finish a, a paragraph that he was writing on the sheet. So uh, definitely an amazing uh, TTM signer, amazing to his fans. And so happy to pick up a couple more Norm Duke autographs. All right, next, really excited to get this autograph. This is a legendary college football coach. Um, not the biggest fan of the school, but uh, he is a, a former Cowboy coach. Did win a championship with somebody else's players, as they like to say. Uh, but this is Barry Switzer. And he did win the... Uh, Cowboys a championship I want to say it was 95 right after uh, Jimmy Johnson resigned so it was mostly Jimmy Johnson's players but still have a lot of respect for, for Barry Switzer and definitely amazing amazing coach happy to have an autograph of his in the collection All right, next, this is another duplicate autograph, but this is uh, an amazing hockey player. And he is an amazing TTMer, but I only have one card of his. I definitely have to pick up uh, some, some more cards of his uh, so I can actually send them out to, to get autographed. But in the meantime, picked up a second one of these 4 by 6s signed by Dave Keon. And I, just, I just love the imagery on this card. Old school without the helmet. And, uh, I'm not sure if that's Ken Dryden or not, but it might be. But just an amazing image. And he's got a fantastic autograph. Looks like he signs it David Keon. And then 14. Great penmanship. All right, another fantastic TTMer. And uh, I have sent to this guy and, and received a return from him, uh, but it was mostly uh, early 90s stuff, and I would love to get uh, a few more vintage cards to send to this guy. This is a three-time Hall of Famer, uh, just a legendary player, coach. And of course, I'm talking about Lenny Wilkins. He is a Hall of Famer as a player, as a coach, and as an assistant coach for the Dream Team in 1992. So this is just a fantastic looking autograph. Really happy to add another Lenny Wilkins autograph to the collection. Now, this is one that I'm really excited to get. I, I'm not sure that this guy is a consistent TTM signer, so really happy to get this. And uh, on that note, I probably only have one card of his anyway. Uh, but yeah, Hall of Famer, class of 2014. This is Walter Jones. I don't know if you can see it, but it's Walter and then Jay and then a line. And then Hall of Fame, 14. And he did put his number 71 right there. Just really happy to get this. Just an amazing, amazing player. And uh, would probably like to pick up a few more of his rookie cards to add to the collection. They're probably... Only a couple bucks, but I think I only have one. But uh, If he is signing, definitely send him a TTM because one of the best to ever play, for sure. <clears throat> All right, I've sort of been teasing about this autograph, and it's not a big autograph, but I really like the story. And uh, this has to do with April Fool's Day. Um, before I talk about April Fool's Day, I want to wish everybody a happy Easter. 
hope you're spending time with family and, and uh, uh, enjoying the day. Uh, although this is this is uh, actually being shown early on Easter. Uh, still, I hope you have a great day. Um, but now, um, with April Fool's Day being on Monday, I believe, um, this is the perfect time to kind of show this autograph and tell a little bit of a story. And uh, I, I felt I actually tried to write this out, and I ended up with like five pages. So it's it's probably better for me to just read it off of Wikipedia. Um, but this is uh, basically it was a hoax, um, you know, in the spirit of April Fool's Day. But let me go ahead and show you. There's actually two of them. This is Sid Finch. This says, Happy April Fools, Sid Finch, a.k.a. Joe Burton. And I have two autographs of this individual. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Sid Finch and the April Fools hoax, as they say. So, Sid Finch is a fictional baseball player, subject of the notorious April Fools' Day hoax article, the Curious Case of Sid Finch, written by George Fli of George Plimpton, and first published in the April 1, 1985 issue of Sports Illustrated. According to Plimpton, Finch was raised in an English orphanage, learned yoga in Tibet, and could throw a fastball as fast as 168 miles an hour. 168, that's absurd. All right, so talking about the hoax. In early 1985, Mark Mulvoy, the managing editor at Sports Illustrated, noticed that a cover date that year would fall on April 1st. He asked George Plimpton to commemorate this with an article on April Fool's Day jokes and sports. When Plimpton found himself unable to find enough examples to craft an article, Mulvoy gave Plimpton permission to create his own hoax. Plimpton reported that Hayden, Sid Hartha, or Sid Finch, was a rookie baseball pitcher in training with the New York Mets after being discovered in Old Orchard Beach, Maine. He also wore only one shoe, a heavy hiker's boot, when pitching. You can kind of see that here. Sorry, Sith, I know you don't like feet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you got the hiker's boot right there, and then he's barefoot on his other foot. And this is actually the image they used in the Sports Illustrated article as well. Uh, but let's get on to the article. Uh, Finch, who had never played baseball before, was attempting to decide between a sports career and one playing the French horn. What was astonishing about Finch was that he could pitch a fastball at, a, at an amazing 168 miles an hour, far above the record of a mere 104 miles an hour, with pinpoint accuracy and without needing to warm up. The Mets scouting report gave Finch a 9 on fastball velocity and control 8 is the highest score on the scale. <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> let me read that again. The Mets scouting report gave Finch a 9 on fastball velocity and control with 8 being the highest score on the scale. So basically his fastball velocity and control were beyond the scale of 8. <clears throat> According to Plimpton, Finch grew up in an English orphanage and was adopted by an archaeologist who later died in a plane crash in Nepal. After briefly attending Harvard University, he went to Tibet to learn yogic mastery and, of mind and body under the great poet, poet saint Lama Malaraspa, which was the source of his pitching prowess. Finch decided not to pursue a baseball career, instead choosing to play the French horn or golf or something. The story was accompanied by photographs of Finch, including one featuring a young Lenny Dykstra and another of Finch talking with Mets' actual pitching coach, Mel Stottlemyre. The Mets played along with the hoax, even providing a uniform and number, number 21, for Finch. Sports Illustrative photographer Lane Stewart recruited his friend, Joe Burton, who is this guy right here, Joe Burton, uh, where am I at? Uh, who was a junior high art teacher from Oak Park, Illinois, to pr pr uh, portray Finch. Burton posed as Finch for the photographs, usually with his face averted from the lens. 
Burton stands at six foot four inches and wears a size 14 shoe. Novelist Jonathan D., who was working as Plim- Plimpton's assistant at the time, described Plimpton at the time of writing the writing of the article as a wreck. D. wrote years later, nothing he knew falls quite so flat as a bad joke. Such was his anxiety that for the one and only time in my five years in his employ, he asked me to come in to work on a Saturday. I still remember my naive astonishment at the sight of a world-famous successful writer actually agonizing over whether something he'd written was good enough, funny enough, believable enough, or whether the whole thing would wind up making him seem like a national jackass. D. also talked about his role in the Finch hoax in an outtake for the 2012 documentary film Plimpton, starring George Plimpton as himself. And now the response. The story was released in late March 1985. Many people fell for the prank. Mets fans were overjoyed at their luck of finding such a player and flooded Sports Illustrated with Sports Illustrated with requests for more information. A New York sports page editor complained to the Mets public relations director for allowing Sports Illustrated to break the news. Two general managers called Commissioner of Baseball Peter Uberoth asking for Finch. The St. Petersburg Times sent a reporter to find Finch and a radio talk show host claimed he saw Finch pitch. The Mets gave Finch a locker between George Foster and Daryl Strawberry. The three major networks, CBS, NBC, ABC, and the local St. Petersburg, Florida newspapers, sent reporters to Al Lang Stadium for a press conference about Finch. At the April 2nd press conference, Burton announced Finch's retirement. The subhead of the article read, read uh, He's a pitcher, part yogi, part recluse. Impressively liberated from our opulent lifestyle, Sid's deciding about yoga and his future of baseball. The letters of these words spell out Happy April Fool's Day. A-H-F-I-B. Despite this clue and the obvious absurdity of the article, many people believed Finch actually existed. The magazine printed a much smaller article in the following April 8th issue announcing Finch's retirement. It then announced it was a hoax on April 15th. The Aftermath Plimpton eventually broadened his article into a novel, first published in 1987. The book discussed Finch's brief recommitment to baseball, in which stories in which stories of Sadaharu O oh and Steve Dalkowski, as well as Finch's girlfriend, inspire Finch to stick with baseball, and he reaches the major leagues with the Mets. In April 2015, ESPN released a documentary on his 30 for 30 shorts program about the Sid Finch phenomenon and another April Fool's joke for a new generation, or as another April Fool's joke for a new generation. And that's actually how I learned about this story, the 30 for 30 short. On, April, or on August 26, 2015, the Brooklyn Cyclones had a Sid, Sid Finch bobblehead giveaway for the 30th anniversary of the event. George Plimpton has died, so his son Taylor threw out the ceremonial first pitch. Joe Burton attended and signed autographs on the bobblehead. The bobblehead showed Finch in a Cyclones uniform with a French horn and one bare foot. The Cyclones were not in existence in 1985, a team executive explained in an interview during the game and radio broadcast that using the Major League team name and logo would have been much more expensive. So anyway, uh, that's the story of Sid Finch. 168 mile an hour fastball. Pitched with one bare foot and one hiker's boot. But uh, I, I found the story fascinating, and when I saw this autograph on the autograph, then I not only had to get one, I had to get two. Because there's there's really not many April Fool's jokes in sports that I can think of, or, and George Plimpton had the same problem. So, <laughs> but this one's definitely memorable. Although y- you can you can kind of realize the absurdity of a 168 mile an hour fastball, uh, the, the the fact that people bought into it. And all the major networks were trying to learn 
uh, information about uh, Sid Finch. And <laughs> I don't know if that could fly today, but it did in 1985. And so this is the perfect time to uh, introduce you all to Sid Finch if you were unfamiliar. But yeah, uh, that was the uh, Wikipedia article that I was reading. I don't have a copy of that issue of Sports Illustrated, but I would probably like to pick one up at some point if I can find one for a decent price because uh, it's just a great story. All right, well, that's the autographs that I have to show this week. So the last thing I have is another stack of the 1984 Topps Baseball Starter Set. Uh, last week, I got through 250, so I'm going to start here with 252. And again, as always, I'll show the backs of a few cards uh, then I'll just show the fronts, uh, unless it's a notable player. So we'll start with Larry Christensen. This one does have a crease on the side, so I'll be replacing this one. Next we have Shane Raleigh. Bruce Benedict. Julio Cruz. Luis Sanchez. The great Sparky Anderson. This one has a little bit of a dark spot. Maybe like tree pulp or something, I'm not sure. Next, we have Bobby Brown, not the singer, or the model. Next, we have Donnie Hill. We have Carmelo Martinez. I believe this is uh, his rookie card. And I have a friend that I work with that uh, was born in Puerto Rico. Uh, Carmelo Martinez is, is uh, huge in Puerto Rico. He was part of uh, the Puerto Rican Dream Team, which if, if, you, if you haven't seen an image of that team, <laughs> it's absurd, the players that were on that team, but... Carmelo Martinez was part of that team. Yeah, it looks like this is his rookie. Next we have uh, Jack O'Connor. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know about the uh, the Puerto Rican Dream Team until uh, my coworker told me about it. Charlie Puleo. Might have butchered that. Ooh, this one's got some creasing. Nasty creasing. This is Rick Monday. He's got like spider creases all over the top. Some on his helmet. And then you got nasty creases down at the bottom. <laughs> like, wow. So Rick Monday, 1984. 
nice player, but definitely replacing that card. Len Matusik. We have Ed Whitson. Larry Milbourne. This one's kind of got a squished corner right there. That corner's not very good either. Probably be replacing that card. This one looks like it's got a minor crease. Howard Bailey. That looks like a, there's a little something right here. Doesn't go all the way through, but there's something. Next, Daryl Porter. Nice catcher. Larry Sorensen. Jim Beatty. Randy Johnson before Randy Johnson. <laughs> the non pitcher Randy Johnson. Oh, this one's got a crease in it. And this is a fantastic TTM signer as well. I think this is a second year. Dave Dravecki. Yeah, it's got a really nasty crease and kind of goes in like a C shape. Yeah, he's kind of got a tragic story have his arm amputated. Chuck Tanner. Love the old pirate uniforms. I say that every time I see them, but they're fantastic. Next we have Tony Scott. This one's really off center. Wow. But it's sharp. This might be even too off center for me, though. Next, we have Ed Lynch. Spent some time as a GM, if I remember right. UL Washington. Jeff Newman. Jim Gantner. He's got a minor crease right there by the name, kind of in the black border of the picture right there, but it's there. John Butcher. Marty Castillo. Roy Smalley. Bobby Mitchell. Ron Hassey. Tony Phillips. Pretty cool batting stance. Cool batting routine, really. Next we have Willie McGee. Big fan of Willie McGee. He was definitely fun to watch on those Cardinals teams really fast. Yeah, I think his rookie's 83. We have Mike Jorgensen. Oh, I thought there was a crease. Orlando Mercado. Bobby Gritch. Nice player. Mark 
Bradley. Greg Pryor. Al Bumbry. Bob Stanley. I think he does TTMs. Ken Schramm. Alejandro Pena. Daryl Evans. I think he might do TTMs as well. He might charge, though. Nice player. Bob Kearney. This one's got a crease. John Candelaria. There's a crease right there. Candyman. Oh, this one's got a crease in it as well. Bucky F. and Dent. Playing for the Rangers right here. Looks like we're going to have to replace that. Larry Herndon. Chuck Rainey. Don Baylor. Great player. Kevin Hagan. Mike Warren. Al McRae. Another nice player. Former Cy Young winner Mark Davis. Rick Miller. Kent Herbeck. Nice player. Jason Thompson. Ron Say. Another really nice player. Sort of strange seeing him in a Cubs uniform, though. Yeah, it looks like this was his first year with the Cubs. But I definitely remember him more as a Dodger. Although I think he spent a few years with the Cubs. Next, we have Bob Dernier. In fact, I think Say has an 87 tops on the Cubs, so he may have probably spent five years there. I'd have to look it up, though. Next, we have Willie Randolph, another nice player. David Green. Tim Laudner. Scott Fletcher. I was actually a pretty big fan of Scott Fletcher. He was on the Rangers. Say eighty six when I first started following the team. Might have been eighty seven. I know I started collecting in eighty six, but I don't remember if I started following the Rangers in eighty six or eighty seven. But yeah, he was part of the team. They called him Scooter Fletcher. I think I kind of just enjoyed watching watching him. He was more of a, a defensive guy than an offensive guy, but yeah. Pretty big fan of Scott Fletcher. Next we have Steve Bedrosian. Nice closer. Hubie Brooks. Pretty good player. I think he made an all-star team or two. Steve McCaddy.
Gary Renicky. Don Money. Dennis Leonard. Dave Anderson. Great TTM or Danny Darwin. <clears throat> I think he signed four or five cards for me. This is kind of cool. I like that logo. Wouldn't mind getting that card signed. I'd have to get a duplicate, though. Don't want to mess up the starter set. I think this might be the second checklist I've seen. I think we had one in the last group. Always nice to get an unmarked checklist. We have Steve Garvey, although checklists aren't near as important as they used to be with the internet, and you can find the checklist pretty easily. But back in the day, if you didn't have that checklist, <laughs> you basically just looked at the back of the card and put them in order, and you didn't know what you were missing. <laughs> Next, you have Chris Nyman. Here were the, actually, there's a couple of creases right there. Lee Tunnel, or maybe Tunnel, I'm not sure. Next, the great Tony Perez. This needs to be in a penny sleeve. <laughs> Hall of Famer, great player. We've got the All-Stars. We've got George Hendrick. Show the backs of these. Andre Dawson. Fantastic signer. I think he's still 10 per. The Hawk. Interest. Deep sea fishing. Lefty, Steve Carlton. Sweet Lou Whitaker. George Brett. Is it just me or does that bat kind of look small? <laughs> it's like a t-ball bat. <laughs> I don't know. Might just be the angle. Next we have Lloyd Mosby. TTM signer. One per, but for free. Gator. We've got a lot of interest. Hunting, chess, studying the Civil War, Special Olympics program. Next we have Lou Pinella. Adele Washington.
Houston Jimenez. Mitchell Page. This one's got some wrinkles in it. Dane Orge. There are several little wrinkles. I don't even know how you would get those. They're like in the middle of the card, they don't go to any edge. They're just kind of right here. That has to be something like factory done. Next, we have Ron Hodges. John Henry Johnson. Cecil Cooper. I do see him doing little TTMs here, here and there. Charlie Lee. Jose Cruz does do TTMs. I think he's $2 per. Might have to send to him. Next we have Mike Morgan. Next we have Steve Howe. I know last week I was sort of describing Daryl Strawberry's rookie card before I showed it. I mentioned that he had some uh, drug problems throughout his career. And somebody thought I was talking about Steve Howe. Yeah, he definitely, I don't know how many times he was suspended, like four or five times. Yeah, he had more than his fair share of chances. But he was a fantastic pitcher when he actually played, and he, had, he did play some with the uh, Texas Rangers as well. So, yeah. Definitely had his uh, demons, as they say. Next. Great card right here, Cal Ripken and Mike Boddicker. Randy Bush. Chris Bando. I think this was uh, Sal Bando's kid, right? It doesn't say on the back. I think that might be Sal Bando's kid, though. Charlie Hudson. What's going on there? I'm not going to touch that. That might be a booger. A petrified booger. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what that is? <coughs> Next we have Neil Allen. Rick Peters. Crowley. Biff Pokoroba. Great name, Biff. Bob Stoddard. Steve Kemp. Benny Ayala. Tom Bernanski. Pretty nice player. Joe Patini. Starting to get to the end of the stack. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video this week. Bob Jones, Willie Upshaw,
Joe Beckwith. Dave Rosima. Kevin Hickey. Dave Winfield, Hall of Famer, amazing player, amazing athlete. Actually, let me show you the back of that. Dave Engel. Jeff Jones. Got some rough corners. Probably gonna go play him that one. Jeff Zahn. Tom O'Malley. Mike Brown, Jim Dwyer, Rafael Landestoy, Frank Tanana, great TTM signer. Need to send to him at some point. Ron Kittle, former rookie of the year. <clears throat> Mark Thurman. Rick Roden, nice pitcher. During his retirement, became a really nice golfer. This one looks like it got something spilled on it. Great card, though. Yankees batting and pitching leaders, Don Baylor and Ron Guidry, but I don't know, it's a little bit of a spill right there or something. Bobby Castillo. Mike Norris. Rich Gedman. And the last card for this week. Mike Witt. Pitched a no-hitter against the Rangers. Say it was like 83 or something. No, maybe it wasn't 83 because it would have said on the back it might have been 84. Yep. That's uh, through 500, although missing several cards for sure. So hopefully I can finish up the, uh, the set next week. But uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the video tonight and uh, I want to thank everybody for coming to the Spine Ticks after party. Um, those of you that are catching the, the replay, thank you so much for your amazing support. Uh, one thing that I wanted to, to mention is I just finished up um, on Friday my newest um, relaxing sports card card showcase. Um, and I tentatively have that being premiered uh, 3 o'clock central time on Sunday but I, I do know that that's Easter and people are going to be spending time with family and friends um, so I don't know if that's the best time for me to do it and I don't want to do it much later at night because I know people have their own shows going on um, so I don't know if I, I, I want to do it on Sunday I might postpone it till Monday I do have Monday off so I might might do that sometime on Monday during the day because there are again there's 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 shows that are um, going to be Monday 
afternoon and evening. Uh, I don't want to run over anybody, and it is a you know a four hour premiere, so uh, I might try to do that sometime around lunchtime or something like that on Monday. But um, you know, for now, I have it set for Sunday, uh, three o'clock. So uh, hope hopefully I see uh, several of you there. Uh, but until next week, thanks for watching the video, and I'll talk to you again soon. Happy Easter. Bye-bye.